princes and princesses my name is story and welcome back to my channel today i'm going to have a lot of fun because i'm taking the two things that i talk about most on this channel and get to smash it all into one so we're gonna bring disney with lolita fashion wearing lolita to disney world and i'm going to talk very specifically about the disney world part of that because being that i am a cast member which slight disclaimer already i do not represent the disney brand at all their reviews anything like that i am just an employee of the company um but that means that i go to disney world quite often and being that i love to dress in lolita that is something that i go to disney world quite often in <laughs> we're just going to be talking about what you should wear, what you shouldn't wear, some to-dos, some not to-dos, and yeah, let's just get into it. If I look, if I'm looking straight ahead or if I have to get close to the camera real quick, it's because I have a kind of different setup right now in that I have a computer right behind the screen, and so if I'm looking behind it, it's because I'm referencing something specifically behind me. Throughout this video, I will be referencing um, other dresses and of course I will put pictures up throughout the video but in order for me to see it while I'm making this video I have it up like right behind me. I will also be referencing the theme park Disney site which is their rules and guidelines where the company actually stands on dress code and so we're going to be referencing that just so that we have it all kind of tying in together. So I think the first thing I want to talk about with Disney um, is just go over their theme park dress code, their theme park guidelines. So, Disney has a uh, costumes can't be worn by guests ages 14 years and older policy, and this is due to the fact that Disney has a lot of thing about character integrity. And by that they mean they don't want to have some other girl representing Sleeping Beauty in their park cursing and making children cry. They really want to keep the integrity of the characters so that everybody in the park has a lot of fun with them, but also that, uh, you know, nothing out of character happens that could shatter a child's basically dream. And so, like, if you go on their site, they do have a thing about their dress code, their rules and regulations, and what's considered a costume and what's not. And um, also, just a slight disclaimer, the things that I'm going to be talking about in this video are meant to help you if you're like on your way to Disney World or Disneyland, just so that you get a feel of what you can and can't wear, what you can and can't do. But this is all going to be at the discretion of whoever is letting you into the parks or whatever security is around there at that point in time. Um, obviously, their word is what you take on this, not mine. So if I say it's okay and like you get to a park and they're like, hey, you can't really, you can't wear that or you can't do that just listen to the cast members the cast members know the rules better than you or I could ever do and so they are obviously the ultimate authority on any of these things I'm just trying to get it to a point where you can most likely go in and it'll be perfectly fine like I said I've gone in and out several days several times with many different security officers and I've always been okay and these are just some things that I've done that have worked and made it so that it's not so troublesome when I go in and out and I can enjoy the park so Disney prohibits any costume from guests ages 14 years and older except for on special kind of theme nights that they have such as the Disney villains after hours the Mickey's very Merry Christmas party or the Mickey's not so scary Halloween party and basically on those they'll have their own separate guidelines this video isn't made for those separate events <laughs> just because they kind of throw the entire dress code out the window and give guests more kind of leeway I would say on what they should or shouldn't wear so Disney obviously reserves the right to remove any person wearing attire that is considered inappropriate or could detract from the experience of the guest for this reason I would say don't wear very like OTT over-the-top extra things that might be considered like a costume in the eyes of somebody else and by this I'm not even talking about themed dresses I'm talking like things like Romantic Salon OP by Henrietta it's very layered very fluffy very extra a little longer than the standard Lolita dress and is more likely to get looked at and be considered like a costume versus like kind of a print dress but however with that being said I would say something like Sunday with food uh, JSK by Magic Tea Party would be perfectly acceptable because it's not too extra it's nice it's very casual but it still gives you that tiered Lolita ish look so I would say like those that's what I mean by like not being too extra distracting from other guests you really don't want to be a distraction however of course 
people are going to look at you no matter what because you're wearing Lolita and it's a fashion that most people haven't heard of. They do say that all guests may dress as their favorite character, but they can't pose for pictures or sign autographs for their guests. This is, I would say, probably the hardest thing when you go to Disney parks in Lolita fashion. People may ask to take pictures with you, they may uh, mistake you for like a character because we do have characters throughout all of the parks, and they may ask you for a picture or an autograph. I have found the best thing with these is to always say no. As a guest, you're there to enjoy the park, you're there to enjoy the experience just the same as they are, and so you cannot pose for pictures or sign autographs for other guests. It's just not what you're there to do. And if you are caught doing that, I can say Disney will take you off premises. Uh, they don't want anything messing with the guest experience or cast or, or character integrity. And so that is one of the biggest no-nos, which I know can be hard for other Lolitas. I know like other videos tell people like if somebody asks you for a photo, most of the time you're like, yeah, sure, go ahead and you pose with them and that's perfectly fine but you absolutely can't do that with Disney I always find the way to go is to uh, look at someone and be like oh yeah I'm glad you like my outfit uh, unfortunately though I don't work here so bye <laughs> and it's kind of nice it's polite you're not rejecting them in any way but you're letting them know hey I'm not a cast member I don't work here and therefore like I cannot take a picture with you and it's just kind of a nice little way to set that straight and then go about your day be the guest that you want to be I think the only other thing that might pertain to kind of Lolita's is that they kind of say that um, costumes may not reach or drag on the ground so if you're gonna wear a long Lolita dress I would recommend against it if it's gonna drag on the ground in any way. Obviously most things are to the knees, so those would be pretty fine. Um, and then uh, layered outfits or prop sets around the entire body, such as petticoats, uh, can be strongly discouraged and may be subject to additional security screens. So I typically wear um, this petticoat that I have on now, which is basically a wire frame petticoat. It does surround my entire body. It gives me a lot of extra foof without a lot of the heat, and so that's why I wear it a lot of the time. Whenever I go to Disney and I go through the little metal detector, they have to take a little small metal detector and go around my dress and it sets it off every time because there is corset boning in this petticoat. And so oftentimes I found with security officers, I just have to explain, I'm like, oh yeah, there's corset boning in the skirt, so it may set off your, um, your scanner. They ask you to take everything out of your pockets, they just scan you, and then most of the time they're like, all right, you're good. And then I just kind of go about my day. I would say always explain it and like be like, oh, there's petticoats underneath this, or if you have anything metal in your petticoat or in your lining or skirt or anything like that, like I do, I always tell them beforehand that way they know and it can like trigger in their brain that it's gonna set it off and I'm typically free to go about my day. I have heard like some people saying that uh, they were wearing hoop skirts and they had to take them off. I've never had a security guard tell me to take off my petticoat or anything like that as long as I explain like, hey, it's corset boning in it so it will set off the scanner. After that, it's always been fine. I've always been let in. I've always been able to go about my business and do whatever the, <laughs> do whatever the rest of the thing I want to do. So now that we've talked about basically uh, the dress code that kind of affects everybody else, um, I guess the only thing else is headwear shouldn't cover your face. It's considered like a mask. Your face should be uh, visible during all times. Um, no capes. <laughs> That's kind of it. I think those are like the only things that really affect Lolita in its silhouette uh, as we're going through security. However, we also have the things about what Disney could consider a costume and what it doesn't consider a costume. Being that Lolita is kind of an extra fashion that draws on very historical views, you kind of run the risk of being tagged as in costume all the time. And we honor this feeling. My thing would be is always to try and explain it to somebody as be like, no, this isn't a costume, it's a fashion. However, there are certain things you can do to make it easier for them to know that it's not a costume, it is a fashion. And 
think I just turned my roommate come home. <laughs> so when it comes to Disney and what could be considered a costume and what could not be considered a costume, I always hold true to like two, two kind of basic rules when I'm picking out a coordinate or an outfit. One, I don't wear anything with an apron, and I will explain this later. <laughs> Two, if it looks too close to the character dress, you probably shouldn't wear it in the park. And um, just to give you like a few examples, we're gonna talk about some. So the first thing I would talk about is like Belle's Golden Prom Dress by Eloise Wang. But um, as you can see, it looks almost exactly like Belle's Golden Dress. And it just, it comes too close to what the character actually wears in the Magic Kingdom. And so I can tell you right now, that is a dress that would not fly under regular guidelines. It's just not something that you could go into the park with and be okay. Neither would uh, the Snow White lace back of JSK by Infanta. It again, it's just too close to what the Snow White inside of the parks would actually wear. And you can get like caught up on character integrity. Some things that would, I think, totally be okay to wear is the Alice in Wonderland JSK by Ling Shi. As you can see, it doesn't like look like anything the real Alice would wear inside the park. However, it's Alice in Wonderland inspired. You can definitely see where it comes from the character. And it's a kind of fun little way to pay homage to maybe your favorite Disney video or your favorite character without getting hung up on <laughs> Disney Guylands or being in character. The other one I would say is the Snow White OP by Infanta. As you can see with this one, same thing, it pays a bunch to the character, has little story theme elements in it, however it doesn't look at all what the character would actually wear in the parks. And I think that just uh, comes with the territory of it. I understand that there is a point where you're going to Disney and you're really excited and maybe this princess is your favorite character and you want to dress like her and feel beautiful and that is perfectly valid. However, when it comes to character integrity, Disney's really serious about it and takes very seriously people who portray those characters. My second standard rule is never wear anything with aprons. So this goes to beyond, I would say, just the princess dresses that we often wear in Lolita. Most cast member outfits, if they work in uh, quick food service and beverage or any type of food service and beverage uh, in Adventureland or any type of host, hostess, stewardess position, they have an apron over top of, or at least on the, um, the, the female costume version of it. They always have like an apron over top of like a dress or a skirt that looks very similar to kind of some Lolita dresses. And I'll probably put like a few pictures around here to just say what I'm talking about. But when it comes to Disney, your best bet is to look nothing like a cast member if you wanna get in the parks, if you wanna go through without being stopped every five seconds to ask questions about where things are, which mind you, you're not even allowed to answer because you are a guest, you are not a cast member, and so therefore, impersonating a cast member is taken just as seriously as impersonating a character in Disney. It could get you automatically thrown out of the park, it could get you banned, you never wanna go that far or have that happen to you. And so as a general rule, I would just stay away from any type of dressed apron-like thing over top of any of your dresses. I know most aprons are removable, and I would say if you are removing it, that would be perfectly fine, just don't wear it on you. <laughs> of course, there is the very obvious Baby, the Stars Shine Bright, X Disney collaboration dresses and skirts. And always, I think there's a question of, are these okay to wear to any and all of the other Disney parks? And my thing would always be, yes. Because they're Disney, because they were made in such a way that they don't represent or look anything like any of the other characters' dresses, I think that they are the perfect way to maybe pay homage to your favorite character or your favorite princess or your favorite Disney movie while wearing something that Disney has designed to be worn inside of its parts. So it was designed in mind with 
Disney's rules, regulations, and character guidelines all in mind, and I think it's perfectly acceptable to wear in the park. All right, fellow princesses and princesses, I think that is all the time we have for today. I hope you guys have a magical rest of your night. Before I go, I did want to show people who watched my last video saw the unboxing of the skirt, and I just wanted to show that for a second. This is the Demon of this Universe skirt and I absolutely love it as you can tell it looks absolutely great uh, again my my many thanks to the Lolita who sent this to me I absolutely love it it is one of my favorite skirts of all time uh, if you wanted to see the unboxing of the video you can click up there or if you wanted to see, um, as many of you know, this was actually one of my dream dresses. And if you wanted to see more of those, you can click up here for the dreamy dress diaries, which uh, hopefully the second one of that series will be coming shortly because I mean, Lolita has more than like five dresses on their dream dress list. There is Sabrina saying hi as always. Goodbye everybody, stay magical.